we've got two weeks. A little over two weeks. All right, Bant Vanifier. We played this yesterday and won a bunch of matches with them. It was a lot of fun. I made a small change from the list yesterday. I cut the copies of... I cut the copies of the Brainstorm thing, the Brainstorm fish, and the other thing, the 4-4 four, four that draws a card if you have a token on a creature, the legendary, whatever its name is. And I added to Conclave Cavalier. Because I think I think this is a better 4-drop for, in terms of, like, going through up to your 5. I got Riverwise Augur in the other one. Zagata. Riverwise Augur and Zagata for two Conclave Cavaliers. Other than that, we are card for card uh, what we what we played yesterday. Let's dive on into... I'm going to go ahead and play this one on the ladder. Played this yesterday to moderate success. Hopefully win a couple more matches and finish in the, the top 100 today. Yeah, Zagana, Zagana, like, the fact that she doesn't always draw a card and there's so many Lava Coils is a big deal. J-Rock, thanks for the tier 1 sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. We won most of the matches we played yesterday. It might have been all of them, but I, I genuinely don't remember. I wasn't keeping track. Uh, this hand's okay. It obviously would like an Explore creature, but I think it's keepable. We need a party bus in this list. about that one teamer could be reclamation sand is not good against teamer reclamation brandy savage with the five month three sub thank you very much and welcome back hope you're having a good one happy friday yep Honestly, that's the happiest thing about the events is there's less Wilderness Reclamation in them, I think. At least as far as what we've played so far. This card's so miserable to play against. Uh, we laddered up a bunch yesterday with this Bant Vanifier deck, as well as, um, whatever that other deck was, uh, Abzan Hero. Abzan Hero might be my favorite deck in the format right now. That was a lot of fun. I think I might actually write, Cool Stuff Inc. left me a standing invitation to write when I feel like it, so I might write about that one for them for next week. Well, our plan of drawing an explorer creature or any spells has not come to fruition, unfortunately. The good news here is if they don't have a way to take this Prime Speaker Man if you're off the table, we do get to pod White Wild Growth Walker into a Night of Autumn. Yeah, Ebbs and Heroes on YouTube and my website. Always, always gets uploaded every day. Now, they, they could have Expansion Explosion here and just like wanted to wait till I had a better threat to kill. So if they have Expansion Explosion here, they can kill Prime Speaker Man if you're with it. And then we probably die because they're drawing four cards. We haven't, we haven't drawn a spell. Well, I mean, that, that technically constitutes a spell, I guess. Not all of the Teamer Reclamation decks play play Nexus. Have a good one, Theo. You know what, Marty? You know what? <laughs> I would like the record to reflect that I had timed you out before you told me I could. 
<laughs> oh, all right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna stop pretending like we have a chance to go to the next game. Savannah Fear out matchup. Maybe. And an end. Thank you for the 12 month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I knight thee, defender of the realm. Thanks for the support. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, I think Grace is supposed to come out in these matchups. You don't you don't outgrind the opponent's deck. You you win the game by killing them before they kill you. Grace's Graces is slow. Hippity and Erd Erd Erdian wins with the nine month resub. Thank you very much and welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. And Hippity with the ten months. Holy gosh, dude light. Dude light bringing out the big guns, giving the gift of speech to 20 people in chat. Welcome, New Hoaglandians, and thank you for your generosity, dude light. You timed out Marty, so someone had to do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright, well, I mean, it's better than... I'm gonna play Jade Light Ranger this turn to give myself the best chance to cast Vivian Reed next turn. Dude Light, is there anything in particular you'd like to see added or bumped in the queue with that? People people who give subs get democracy to, to dole out with it as always. I think I'm just supposed to jam Vivian here. I guess I could jam Conclave. I'm gonna attack for four and jam Conclave. Think, I think they have a counter spell here. They don't. Okay. Adding adding four more power to the table is not irrelevant. Oh, they have growth spiral into a counter spell. That's brutal. But still, like this getting counter spelled is better for me than Vivian getting counter spelled. Oh, punished for attacking with the elf. Kind of like syncopate would counter my Vivian, and I'd rather it not counter my Vivian. It's definitely close. All right, so now that I drew Knight of Autumn, I'm definitely going to lead on that because this generates a double spell turn for me. That just worked. Nice. And a deputy of detention. Sign me up. Yay, disruptive annoying creatures. Watching Jeff on payday is dangerous. Yeah, you can always find all the decks that we've already played on stream today on my Stream Decker page. Tristani would have been lethal there, which is the reason why Tristani's in our deck and uh, things like Biogenic Ooze are not. She powers up our team the turn we play her.
And again, just highlighting the kind of like meh gameplay. Like in this matchup when you win, it's just because they didn't do anything. Well, maybe you could argue we did spell pierce and knight them. So we did interact with them, I guess. It did have some some interaction. Well, you let me know, dude. Like, you can cash those in whenever you'd like. I got Mulligan. This sand just doesn't do enough, right? Like, no counter spells. No way to interact with enchantments. Like if this, like if I had an explorer creature to go with the wild ghost walker, I might keep that, but I didn't. Cash in what? Gifting, gifting subs to the channel gets you points to put things or add, add to the queue. Just like sending donations or cheers. So if you'd like to add or bump anything with your, with the, with the democracy from your 20 sub gifts, you are welcome and encouraged to do that. I think I have to keep this here just because it's my second white source. And if you're not ready for it, you don't have to pick right now. You can just let me know later. I always encourage the people who support me to, you know, kind of dictate what we do regardless of the manner in which they support. Hopefully, hopefully they play Wilderness Reclamation next turn. Payday, best day. Put this towards girl aggro. 10 out of 10. Let's get, let's smash some nerds. Let's, let's smash some folks. We'll have some girl aggro up next. Thanks for the absurd support, J-Rock. Oh, that card is such a beating. We had, we had one of these decks do this to us yesterday too. And it was kind of brutal then as well. I'm going to keep holding up the spell peers. They're decking the queue, which you specifically have been looking forward to. I honestly wouldn't mind playing more Abzan Hero. Yeah, Arena is interesting in that, like, the more you play, the more cards you pick up, the more decks you just, like, kind of incidentally have. Phased out. Thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Cannot spell Pierce of Lava Coil here, unfortunately. What's an easy way to import a deck? So all the decks on my website have a an import button on them. You listen to much electro swing. I, I'm assuming that's a genre of music, but I, I couldn't tell you what 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 songs those entail all right well if i attack with everything they take four and they kill this. I don't think that's worth it yet. I really need a really need a deputy of detention. Itty bitty bugle boy to do 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 do. play a 4-3 here, and then next turn we'll start smashing. V 
the total contributed is the amount of dollars someone has sent in to add or bump a deck with. The, um, the total score is the amount of time a deck's been waiting to be played, plus the amount of contributed to it. So I give every day a deck sits in the queue, it accumulates one point. So that way decks that have the minimum amount contributed to them don't sit and rot in there forever from people who send in more than the minimum amount. Belpier's doing stuff. Although, I'm still kind of behind on board, right? Really hoping to draw, like, Vivian or Deputy here. I wonder if I'm not supposed to board out Crisis. So if I hit them, I get them for six. I think, I think we just start full swinging, because I kill them with three full swings, right? Like, this attack really sucks if they have Fiery Cannonade, but I'm not beating Fiery Cannonade at this point anyways, I don't think. So this puts them, this puts them to 10, and then next turn they can block a two power thing and take eight and go to two. Yeah, they have a lot of draws that are bad for us here at this point, but I think I just need to keep pressuring them. And if like, hope their leftovers are bad here basically. All right, they have two spells in their hand because Growth Spiral doesn't pause if you have lands, so. So I'll be in and out all day today as it's the end of a sprint and I have a ton of meetings. Please put my joint points towards whichever deck you most want to play. Thanks, dude. Light, I appreciate it. And will do. So if this is a Fiery Cannonade, I'm just going to concede. The ship and fire okay so this puts them uh this puts them to four which means they are dead on board so if they have if they have two blanks they're dead i feel like we can assume they don't have another removal spell because they'd have had another removal spell well they didn't have one unless they drew it for the turn just just dead and again just like I don't, I don't want to harp on these decks too much, but just to iterate, I don't think they're too good. We beat them plenty of the time. It's just like a game like that where even though I won, I feel bad afterwards. It's just like not a satisfying experience. It's like, well, we got incredibly lucky and they didn't do their thing, so we won. It wasn't like, oh, we played this really sweet close game where I did my thing and they did their thing and we interacted a little bit and there was combat math that was relevant and like... But, you know, sometimes sometimes you squeak by. Sometimes you squeak by. I think if we win into the top 100, we'll play out the rest in the league. Just because if we get high up there, I don't want to risk running bad. This hand's really good. Get to go Elf into Elf Wild Growth Walker. Crisis is not a bad pickup either. This is it another Nexus deck? Not a Nexus deck, God bless. This hand's probably really good in a matchup like this. They could, they could theoretically still be Sultai, but could be a teamer build too. I'm thinking about using Card Sphere. Have you used it? So I personally have not used Card Sphere, but I've heard nothing but good things from people who have used it when I was doing some research when they approached me as a sponsor. Basically, you send you send out cards to people that have requests, and then you get points, and then people send cards cards to you for the points that you have. And then unlike unlike other systems that have failed in the past and kind of collapsed on themselves, the similar idea, all of the points on card sphere have a cash value that you can cash out, I think, minus 10%. I don't know what the exact percentage is. If you read on their website, it should tell you. So I went ahead and played Mana Fear this turn. Because next turn I can play Jade Light Ranger and then pod Jade Light Ranger up into some stuff. So let's do let's do this to start. Actually, I probably want to pod first, huh? Do I want to get a 2-drop or do I want to get a 4-drop? Dealer's Choice. Thank you, Rick, for the very generous Tier 2 resub. And thanks for the 5 months. Welcome back. I get another Wild Growth Walker. Yeah, that's the line. I 
Loam is love, loam is life. Greetings from my Texas vacation. I hope you're having a great vacation. Unbanned death right down to death right down to shove wrong. JAC, do prime subs. Prime subs do not auto renew. Yeah, we drew a land and have a bugler on top. This gives us a lot of pressure. So like, the wild growth walker package just makes it impossible for them to race us at this point. And we've got active prime speaker van of fear, so they're just gonna have a real bad time. Uh, this is probably a baffling end matchup. Probably want to be able to kill their creatures. Um, Deputy of Detention seems great. Knight of Autumn's probably not super necessary. I don't think I want Vivian Reed. I think these pieces of top end are probably just fine. They might have Vivians of their own, which makes our Lyra worse. So I think I'm going to go ahead and trim her. I feel about trimming some Bugler, maybe. Probably trimming July is probably not unreasonable for that same that same reason. Give this a go. All three of yours auto renewed, so they may have changed that. Weird. Someone else said that too. I wonder if it's still just a weird timing thing. I'd be very surprised if they changed that to auto renew, but who knows? I mean, as a streamer, I would appreciate it if they did. Lead to a lot more, a lot more consistency. But I assume they don't have them auto renew, so you can't just like have your family and friends set it and forget it, basically. A button popped up, reminding me. Okay. Mustard One, thanks for the prime support. Thanks for shipping your basil bucks this month. Happy Friday. Hope you're having a good start to your weekend. Yeah, I agree. This Vanifier deck's been a lot of fun. Ah, oh, gosh. If either of these were green sources, this against great. Um, but to bottom that, I uh, I added the Abzan Hero deck to my website this morning before I signed on because I had a little bit of spare time. And I'm going to be adding this deck to my website this evening, I believe. I got some artwork for it. Itty bitty bugle boy, do 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 do. Can we upgrade on top of the prime sub? Unfortunately, Twitch doesn't let you do that. It doesn't let you, like, kick $5 on top of the prime sub. Are they playing Teamer Domery? They're playing Teamer Domery, that's interesting. Let's do this, do this. Bugle pretend to be Growth Chamber Guardian? Yeah, basically. Punch this over here. Hit me again. Hit me again. So they're gonna get. Are we gonna have, like see a worm hit me this turn? This is gonna be a real big worm if so. Yep. I assume this is gonna be a five-five to protect the domery. Yeah. All right, mom. Am I gonna take decks off the standard Porsche website? Yeah, I, I do that regularly, Drug Fly Monk. When when a deck feels like it's no longer reasonably competitive, I pull it off of there. Ugh, and there's the Ravager Worm. I was really hoping they'd play another Crisis so I could pot into Deputy of Detention. Feels like this one's gonna be a runaway for the opponent here. Well, normal subs and prime subs are the same the same thing, Gittle. So normal normal subs and prime subs are identical. They come with the same benefits. We're not just dead yet, but we're definitely behind here. 
The fact that they got aggressive with the Hydroid Crisis was good for us here. Because it means they need to chump block to save the Domery. Uh -huh. Ride right on my noggin! Ride on my noggin! Do I make less money on Prime Subs? Nope. Prime Subs are identical to Twitch content creators as, as Tier 1 subs in every way. That's why they come with all the same benefits. I get I get 350 from a Prime Sub or a normal Tier 1 sub. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. Second worm. We're not here. Huh. Do I want these Vivians? They're, if they're more grindy, I think I want these Vivians. I'm going to cut two of these baffling ends. Uh, Chalky, if you're on desktop, you can actually click the video settings and see your lag. Although I don't think you can do that if you're on mobile. Game three on the play. Poppy. Poppy would like a land war elves, please. Yeah, there's there's tiers of partnership, Goblin Nabub. I've been I've been up from the, the base tier for a while. Once you once you hit a certain number of subscribers and you maintain that amount for a while, you can renegotiate to get a better contract with Twitch. This is sweet, so next turn I get to go land more elf plus second walker, and then the following turn go explore, explore. You have lava coil, that's fine. Still gonna stick to the plan, I think, although now we'll play that. Wild, wild growth walker soaking up lava coil before we draw pod mom is sweet too. We'll just, I don't know what Endry's Forest Runners does, so no, we're not playing that. Well, I was kind of hoping to find some spells here. Looking, looking for a Crisis or something along those lines. That'll, that'll do, pig. Gittle, thank you for the sub gifties. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a good Friday. Oh, Forerunner's the mini crater. Mini crater, if you are right. And no, we're not playing that card. Usually, you don't you don't need to go that big with Prime Speaker Vanifier. So we're hoping to dodge the third lava coil here. Fight with fire. That's interesting. Crisis, please. Screw beats flood, unfortunately. So we're probably dead here. I guess they're a little far behind. Like they are going to eight. So like maybe we could stabilize this. Or maybe we can run them down before they stabilize fully. It's really unfortunate. <sighs> I think I just need something higher impact than that. Yeah, Krasis. Krasis does unflood us. You're not wrong. And I did bring my Vivian reads back in. My Vivian reads in for this game. So, like, that could be helpful as well. Yeah, so now, now they're no longer screwed. And, like, they can cast Ravager Worm at this point. So, I assume this Prime Speaker is not living. Thanks, Kittle. If they don't have a Worm, I assume they should down tick Domery to look for it. The Rekindling Phoenix comes back every turn, Greg. So I wasn't winning with the stuff I had on board, so I felt it was correct to pump the brakes. But obviously, in order to pump the brakes being correct, we have to draw spells. And we were, we were about to lose a match eventually, right? Like we're running, running real hot, winning all of them. 
And that's why, that's why once we, once we get to a high spot, I want to, like, back off and cool it. Just because, like, you're going to hit streaks like this where you just, like, don't work well. Is Team Erdomri an aggro deck? Yeah. Yeah, and that's why a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people are so used to the Wild Growth Walker package being present in Sultai, which is a grindy mid-range deck, that, like, they don't understand that the Teamer decks are aggro decks. And they're trying to play them like, like grindy decks, and they're losing because of it. They're taking, taking the wrong role assessment in different matchups because of it. Pretty good. Solid curve here on the play. My wild growth walker lived. Step step one. Not looking for that one just yet. Aim 0% to block with the wild growth walker. If they attack with the goblin without killing my branch walker, I'm going to trade there or attempt to trade should they have collision colossus. The Teamer Domery deck overall is just like really close to, uh, it's really close to the Teamer Climb deck. They're very similar. And it, it costs it cost me money to put things on my website because I have to commission artwork get done. So I usually put things up there if there's enough variation between them and the other things that exist. All right, one of your finest Jaylen Rangers, please. Probably going to play Biogenic Uge this turn. Um, it's going to be that. Prime speakers now outside of lava coil range, which is great. Yeah, it's, it's pretty free to splash blue into the green red deck to play crisis and counter spells. I pay artists with money instead of exposure. I do. It's this it's this weird thing I'm trying where I pay people for their time. Alright, so I'm gonna turn Jade Light into Shalai. And then I'm gonna go ahead and Deputy of Detention their rekindling Phoenixes. Pod Pod Mom is an ooze. One of the one of the many kind of random creature creature types started there is ooze. Yeah, we shot we shot the birds down. Um, I'm gonna trim one crisis here. I'm gonna trim Knight of Autumn. The ooze was okay there. The ooze is okay here, but I think I'd rather just have Lyra and Tristani on average, so I'm going to trim that, especially since I'm bringing in some other top end here. Because I'm trimming a 5, I'm going to trim a Cavalier as well. This is also a 4-drop that dies to Lava Coil. Excuse me, so that's not great for no value. Bugler's a little bit small, and value-based isn't really what we want to do to be winning here, I don't think, so I think that's probably the last trim. Pile of Gore, thanks for the 2 on 3 sub, I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. This seems uh, reasonable. All Simic cards should be uses. Yeah. Sit down for a bit. Sit down in my wonderful new DX Racer chair. We'll have real feedback on Wonderful or Not here soon. We got we had it put together last night, so I posterior reside in it for a little while before we say good, bad, or otherwise. Everybody I know that has a racer likes it. My buddy Mike said his had had his for a while. Second Van is kind of mediocre here. Really looking to draw a uh, a two or three drop, so we can like get onto the board. We might we might just get run out of the game with this hand. Yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate. And like a Phoenix here or another another haste threat. We did not build the chair on stream. 
Christy had pulled it out of the box and like put it mostly together last night. So uh, Collision Colossus or Lava Coil or Volt and we're dead to rights here. Dragon also kind of dead to rights. Dead the shock, did the lightning strike. Am I dead? I don't think I want to change anything. I think I'm happy with how we sideboarded. They just had a pretty aggressive start on the play, and I had a pretty slow start on the draw. Sure. Obviously, I'd like to draw an explore creature, just something to do on three, but... I think this is keepable on the play. One more shot to draw a relevant play next turn. If we don't have a relevant play on three, we could be in trouble. Perfect. Sucks, Sucks that Texas Ranger died, but... Alrighty. I was kind of hoping for this to be to grow up a little bit, but... Here we are. Snapping off a trade on the Pelt Collector if they offer it. Just want to preserve our health soul at every possible avenue here. They, like, have a shock and are debating if they want to trade it for the Jade Light Ranger or, like, Lightning Strike or something. I think I just do this. It might, it might be right to lead on the Cavalier to bait the removal spell. Strictly better than the other. I definitely don't have enough reps in with either to make strictly better, strictly worse comparisons. Okay, that bodes well for our hero. No attacks with these is interesting. Alright, if I get to untap with Prime Speaker here, we're going to be in an amazing spot. So I get to go Cavalier, and then, uh, then turn it into Tristani. Alright, and now we're wide, and, like, Tristani prevents Prime Speaker from dying to top deck Lava Coil, which is great. I just like cast Lyra. Yeah, Tristani makes the board dance. I think I cast Lyra, and I'm gonna pod one of these into a Land War Elf. Just so I can, like, get the chain going. They've had enough. How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody or everyone out in the world. Thanks for dropping by here today. My name is Chef Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. If you are someone who enjoys standard best of three constructed, this is definitely the channel for you. We play a ton of different decks here, and usually I change decks every 60 to 90 minutes. There's a lot of variety. As always, a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day and day without their wonderful support, so thanks for keeping me employed here to all of them. I'd also like to mention a couple of my sponsors here really quick. The Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series is a $5,000 cash tournament series that happens every single month in the Midwestern United States. 
If you can't make it out to the Midwest to play in one of their standard modern or legacy tournaments, you can find their streaming coverage online as well at twitch.tv forward slash NRG series. Lucid Sound are the ones that make my wonderful headset. If you head on over to lucidsound.com, you can save 20% on your new headset with them, plus get free shipping by using code TEMPO. Neo provides candy flavored protein bars using code Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Hugo bar. You can save 10% on any purchases there with them. And of course, I'd like to welcome everyone out there to Hoaglandia. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. And I appreciate you dropping in to spend part of your day here with us. We're heading on into our next match here with the Van Fear deck. What's the score with the Van Fear deck? I have no idea. I feel like we're winning more than we're losing, but the, deck, the deck's doing powerful things. One of the decks we laddered up with yesterday. We're climbing ish today. Remember, one of the best things you can do for yourself as a Magic player is you need to learn to divorce yourself from the results of whatever specific deck you're playing. Just because just because you're 0-3 with the deck doesn't mean it's bad. Just because you're 3-0 with the deck doesn't mean it's good. You need to kind of take a step back and think about, like, why you're getting the results you're getting. Remember, remember that your sample sizes are generally small. And even when your sample sizes start to get bigger, there's a lot of variables that you can't control for that makes them hard to look at for, for from a purely objective data standpoint. Like, remember, even if you log, you know, let's say you log 200 matches with the deck, like, your deck list probably wasn't identical for all 200 of those matches. There's a lot of other small factors that go into it. All right, so we're dead because I've kept this hand against Mono Red, which, again, is just, like, one of the big upsides to playing an aggro deck in this format is that you get to... You get to, uh, you know, always be proactive and occasionally your mid-range opponents keep speculative hands. Captain Gianyu, thank you for the three months. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you feel better. The drawing the Elfine one there was real good for us. Rick's Maddie, interesting. Maybe a small black splash. Gutter Bones. They're they're straight up they're straight up red black aggro. Got it. Maybe maybe they're slightly less burn based then if they're red black aggro. What explanation for your wins points to your deck? I don't, I'm not sure I understand your question, Ben Faith. This would have been an ideal draw last turn. However, we'll just go ahead and play this out now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on top of my deck, I think, here. Because next turn I can go Branch Walker plus Elf plus Tap Land. And then Curve into Tristani or Crisis here. I don't think I would swap the Spell Pierce for a Siren Storm Chamber, but Siren Storm Chamber does seem interesting. Maybe it's worth a slot somewhere. I would I would love to trade these if they offer it. Just like, we're, we're the deck that goes bigger, so as the game goes long, we're more likely to win. So I just want to make every possible trade on defense that I can to ensure that we live. Uh, some of the shirts have a thing on the back of them and some of them don't. Interesting that they elected to play Goblin Chain Whirler knowing there's an elf on top of my deck. Probably doesn't bode well for the health of my elf. The health of my elf. Do I want to cash this in as a game three? I think I do. I'm going to play this for four. The fact that they're going a little bit bigger here is kind of bad for us. It's unfortunate. Needed to draw some spells here. Just this attack is good for us because it implies that they don't have any burn spells here. There isn't, there isn't, a, it isn't objective, Venfaith. 
And that's one of the things that makes magic so tough. Being being good at magic and learning learning the ways to do things, they're not objective skills. There's a lot of it's a lot of opinion based just the way data works. Like it's not it's not a it's not an objective process. It's a super subjective process. All right, so explore creatures and hydrate crisis are good draws at this point. Yeah, the life the life linkers don't even do anything here because they have a bunch of first strikers. So I need to need a live draw next turn. Or we just die to these phoenixes. Crisis would be absurd. Jade Light would be an okay secondary. Hey, look, we drew another land. And this is why, again, it's important to like, like if you look at games like this, right? Like the, the one match we lost today, like we just, we just mulling into where we flooded out and died in the third one. That's just like how magic goes sometimes. Just gotta, gotta take the good with the bad. Ooze is slow here. Nerve Knight of Autumn's good enough. Being able to gain life is probably relevant. I probably want some baffling end. Yeah, data data doesn't lie, but people lie with data all the time. That's basically the TLDR. Feel about cutting militia bugler. Deputy of detention is actually probably pretty bad. I guess this is a good answer for clearing Phoenix out though. I could have taken 30 seconds to see if my opponent made a mistake. You're right. I did not give my chance an opponent to mess up. I did not give my opponent a chance to mess up. Uh... I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to leave one in to, to Prime Speaker for him. Needed a deputy there. Needed a. Needed a crisis. Needed a wild growth. Needed a explore creature. Is Dovin worth consideration? I don't think so. They're a chain whirler deck, and I already have a lot of threes here. The Dovin's in the sideboard in this deck, mostly for like the mid range and control matchups, where you want more things to generate card advantage. At least that's why I've been using him so far. I know he's like okay against aggro, but like my deck already has a lot of kind of clunky threes and fours that I would define as okay against aggro. So I don't know that I want another. Like if you look at the curve of my deck and you look at like how many things exist at three, there's a lot of them. You put Dovin in the sideboard for mono blue. That's interesting. I guess he blocks there. So we're hoping you draw lands for the next three turns. That's just, you know, that's how the magic goes. There's going to be a lot of matches of magic where you have two games where just no, no, really aren't any meaningful choices you get to make and you just die. That's just like how the, how the game goes. You can't, you can't sit around and lose games like this. You got to play, got to play something else. Chess is great. Go is great. Maybe, maybe we have a shot here, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're too far behind at this point to play catch up. Do I do have two really powerful fives in my hand? <sighs> I was hoping for an explore creature there. Maybe I'm supposed to take the elf, so that way if they play another phoenix... I can go Deputy plus Elf if I draw a land. It's never going to draw a land, so it doesn't matter. Maybe maybe their burn deck doesn't have any spells that deal three in their hand, and this Deputy will be able to untap, and then we'll get to play Shalai. If they don't have a burn spell, and I get to curve Shalai into Lyra, we could be okay here.
think they have uh, a spectacle. Oh, what's it called? Skewer the critics here? Because they were paused like they were waiting to cast something. They didn't realize they were still inside of combat. Is this dead? What's the deal? At least they did me the solid and let me untap for the possibility to have a counter spell. Unfortunately, we were unable to punish them. Up and down like the rubber band we go. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Stay solidly in the 200s. It's fine. We've got Grohl aggro coming up after this one too, so we'll keep playing on the ladder with that one. The girl aggro deck's pretty good. <sighs> Not quite ready for that one just yet. Yeah, Sands okay against Mono Blue. And I mean, again, like you mentioned underperforming, like that's just like, we definitely ran a little bit good yesterday and today we're just like, you know, missing fourth land drops and flooding out and dying. Like that's just, that's just how, that's just how magic works. Like the fact, the fact that we climbed from like 96% yesterday, like to, to top 200 meant that we were running absurdly good. Need to, you need to remember, um, you need to remember that, like, Magic's got an absurd amount of variance in it. Like, the best players in the game only win, like, 75% of their matches. Is there a rank decay? What's the stops one from sitting on top 200 and never playing another game all season? So, ladder slots are competitive. You're competing with other people for them. So, people are going to climb past you is basically how it works. We're never going to gain life with these wild growth walkers, are we? So if you, if you get to a rank and sit there, people are going to win matches and jump past you, which pushes you down. And then the further you get, the more people win matches and move past you, pushing you down further. So like we, we signed off yesterday in, um, whatever rank we were in, like 160 and I signed in today and I was 210. So some, some mix of either decay or people climbing past me, I don't actually know how that works. I don't know that they publicly stated how the, how that system works. If there is decay or if it's just people jumping past. Trying my best to bait a counterspell here. It feels like they have it and we're just gonna get got. Don't have to have to just like head to the space jam at this point. Exactly dead. Good beats. Good beats. I'm getting unable to access deck list on my site. On which page, Fuzzy Jello? There's a lot of deck lists up there. Uh, 
Uh, try refreshing Fuzzy Jello. It works fine here. Works for me using Google Chrome. I want to trim Bugle. I'll split the difference on these. I'm gonna split the difference on these just because this is cheaper. Vanifier. Vanifier is a little slow. Resolving, resolving four minute things can be tough. I don't think I want Spell Pierce in this patch yet. Maybe we should bring it in just because it's pretty resource efficient. In. Sign me up. I'll go with walk around the play. Let's do it. So far, the sub only chat's been a huge success. Gift Rock Monster. I think I'm probably going to keep it for the next month. And then see how we feel from there. They could have like a Wizard Retort or something here, but I just like don't have anything else going on. And I'm like, their chances of having a counterspell don't get worse the longer I let them sit there and wait. Yay, agree speed. It cost me a little bit in terms of viewer numbers, but I'm kind of happier with it off, so it's probably a... Uh... Now, people, people who want to come in and, like, spit random vitriol at me, Chalky, can still do so every 10 minutes. A lot of a lot of the people who want to be turds, like, aren't turds constantly in chat because we time them out. It's just the removing having to police extra people that I don't necessarily have to police in my life is nice. And again, the biggest, the biggest takeaway that a lot of people I'm not sure they understand, it just moderating my chat while I know a lot of people here appreciate people support me for the heavily moderated chat it's bad PR all right a significant amount of people who say negative things about me today are there because of my my chat moderation policies so the the step to remove that to not have the negativity that's associated with actually having to moderate the chat is just remove people's ability to post who are posting most of the negative things that have to be removed I subbed in part because you went to sub only chat. Yeah, I think there's a few people like that for sure too. I think there, it'll the sub only chat's gonna push people over over the edge who were close to subbing anyways, and I think it's gonna give more value to people who are actually subbed. All right, let's play one more with Van of See if we can. Hit another run good or two. Sand's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's just like, that's just like the, the world we live in though, right? Like, it doesn't matter that there's clearly defined rules and there's a clearly defined you're going to get timed out for breaking the rules. At the end of the day, the perception is what's most important, not the reality of the situation. So like, the perception is that I'm being mean to people because they came in here and got timed out for breaking the rules. So the, the onus is on me because I'm the person who's the personality who's getting the negative, the negativity from that. I think the white source is good here. Got 
just playing Jade Light here. And you know what, and to a large part, AK, I, I agree with you. I think it's not a big deal, and that's why people asking for timeouts, and that's why people asking for timeouts is a joke here for, like, the regulars, but the, the reality of the situation is that it's bad for me, personally. It's bad for what I'm trying to do. I think this is an okay trade for me. It, like, uses their mana up this turn. And like next turn I get to play like Landmore Elf plus a Jade Light Ranger, which seems good. Undercover Lemur, thanks for the two month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, that's another part too, right? Like I don't miss saying, hey, we timed you out because you broke the chat rules. Like having having to sit there and repeat myself constantly like that about things that people should notice, like it makes it makes the content better not having to do that. I say, I sub initially because I stumbled upon your channel. I was impressed at how you answered most people's questions, including my own, in such a busy chat. That being said, I understand the switch. It seems exhausted after being interacted with that many people and have it make sense. Yep. Jareth Core, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Is this just like double three drop this turn? Man, how do we feel about just like double deputy? I could also... Oh, I don't have I don't have double white. That's awkward. I already shocked this in. I guess I guess I'll just play this as a 4-4. Wasn't paying attention. We're discussing things in chat. What was the dip in viewership? It looks like viewership's down like 20% or so with uh with the sub only chat. Which is, which is an amount I'm okay with. Raw, raw viewers at the end of the day, like what advertising revenue ends up being from just like having raw viewer numbers is like, it's like whatever. All right. So I think I bugler at this point so I can try and find explore creatures for these. It took me a long time to warm up to you because of how aggressive the moderation. Now that it's sub-only, it's really apparent that having to constantly moderate really affected you, and switching to sub-only seems to have made a positive impact. I agree, Go Bob. I mean, it's like, it's like constantly having to tell, like, moderating a large Twitch chat is like, const if, if you don't want it to devolve into nonsense, it's like having to constantly tell your children you're disappointed in them and they need to do better. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that too. It's hard. It's hard to pinpoint. There's a lot of factors there, chat master. I don't think it's just. It's just the fact that like we changed the sub only. There's a lot of factors that are outside of my control, and I'm very aware of that. And at the end of the day, like if it makes me happier, like being sub only, that probably means it's worth having. This seems like a fine trade for me. Um, only have six mana here. So I could deputy their crisis. I think I think I'm just gonna wild growth walker into prime speaker here. Now I mean the MPL players have been streaming for a while now, so that didn't really change. So like that doesn't really impact my viewership between like two weeks ago and today. Cryogenic, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome. Hope you're having a good one. Ever since chat switch, my code being written while watching is less buggy, so it's a great success. God bless. <laughs> so next turn, if we don't get lava coiled here, we're actually in an okay spot still. So I get to turn this into a branch walker. And then I get to deputy. I get to deputy their uh their hydrate crisis. Um, Stream Decker might be having some server issues right now. Someone else mentioned that earlier and then it was working again. So, unfortunately, I don't have any control over that. That's a third party plugin. So, the third party that I use might be having some issues today. And the nice thing about tagging Hydrate Crisis here is that I can pot away this Deputy of Detention because, um, what's the word that I'm searching for? It, uh, it comes back as a zero zero. I'm 
But a nice healthy 10 here. Our mana's been a little awkward this game, but we got Prime Speaker Vanifier going on now. This is gonna kill Prime Speaker Vanifier, yep. That's another white source. Okay, so what am I doing here? I finally have... Oh, I don't finally have... I was gonna say, I finally have 8 mana, but that's actually not the case. Need to get rid of the Hellkite, I think. It's gonna suck when they draw a removal spell and then they can use it to deal damage to stuff, but... I'm gonna gain 4 with this. So they can put a bunch of Growth Chamber Guardians into play here, and they have Incubation Druid as well. I do have Biogenic Ooze of my own to kind of fight back in the go-wide plan. Hopefully they wait a turn to attack here. They have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana altogether. They have a lot of, a lot of, even without a spell in their hand, they have a lot of different things they need to count here to figure out exactly how they want to spend their mana. So they probably want to do some mix of adapting Incubation Druids and adapting Growth Chamber Guardians this turn. Or they just have a giant Hydroid Crisis and they were in the tank over. Tank, 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 play the best possible card in my deck. <laughs> oh, those are the worst. I gotta go deep in the tank. I guess, I guess, I guess we'll come out and play the best possible card I can have. It was, a, it, was a long, it was a long, grueling decision. I guess I'll play this one that you can never beat. <laughs> Soul Pit, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Welcome, welcome. Oh, magic. Yeah, but I'm at, I'm at 10 corrosion and like drawing four cards is plenty. Thanks for the three months a little bit. Nah, they were mousing over things. Uh, the person that's saying that that was autopilot or they had to go do something. They were, they were looking at things on the board. Do I want Shalai? Shalai can protect my deputies, which is nice. Uh, Ooze and Tristani both seem okay. I feel like I want to trim some of the top end. Maybe I don't want all these baffling ends in my deck. I guess, like, what of their little creatures do I actually care about? I'm actually just not going to board in the Baffling Ends. I'm just going to board in the Vivians and leave the Shalai and the Deputies. I don't have that many cheap creatures I actually care about. It's mostly, like, their dragons. I te it technically kills Krasis, but I think that's fine. Uh, I will not be on this weekend, Gittle. So between now and when War of the Spark releases, I'm going to be taking the weekends off. Uh, I'll be here Monday to Friday as scheduled, but I'm going to be taking Saturday and Sunday off until we get the new expansion. Maybe I'm supposed to play Land War Elves this turn so I could Prime Speaker on... Yeah, I think this was a mistake. I think I should have I should have played Land War Elves on two. 
Should have played Elves plus the tap land. So I could Prime Speaker a turn sooner. We drew a three drop, so it's like working out. Link to my Discord somewhere. Yeah, you can find details on a pop into the subs Discord here. Note you'll need to be on your desktop computer to get in. Yeah, and like now, if they have Lava Coil, I've allowed them to develop their board more. So if I would have, if I would have like played the Alphot, I would have had Mana Fear in to play much sooner. Which would make things harder for them. I guess our boards are just staring at each other, so it's kind of a wash. It would have given them less chances to draw the Lava Coil too, though. So if they don't uh, have another Lava Coil here... Light with fire. Man, that's brutal. We're kind of on empty at this point, huh? Just don't really have a lot going on. I guess that stays there. Attack for five. We'll see if they have another coil or fight with fire to kill the deputy. If they don't, we might be able to pressure them out of the game with the explore creatures. Hopefully this bugler can find us something meaningful. Either a crisis or a... Or another ban of fear would be nice. I like them. I like them acknowledging the fact that they're kind of behind here. Needing to trade off rather than generate value with that. Another Deputy of Detention would also be a good pull with this Militia Bugler. Alright, Militia Bugler doing its best Growth Chamber Guardian impersonation. Oh, well, at least we got through a bunch of bad cards in a row. Yeah, it's seven, eight, nine mana altogether. Having, not having real removals or real drag in this archetype. Like not having not having access to lava coil puts us really far behind in these pseudo mirror matches. We haven't really flooded a lot today, but not having removal is a real problem too. So yeah, that was a little bit of a tough set. I don't know. I don't really have anything meaningful to say to change or improve the deck. Like, like looking looking back on the games that we played there that we lost, like, it was a lot of flood and screw. I don't really know that I'd look back and go, oh, my deck came up short in, like, terms of, like... Like, if we just changed spells around to try and, like, change those matches, we just didn't have spells, so we wouldn't have drawn them. So. What are we... What are we doing? 